Los Angeles, the hit makers and DJ panel. You're going to enjoy this, plus some of the good vibes of the day. The Blackbird Foundational online series is here. It launches this week. You can win a flyaway trip to Nashville, drum sample software, and much, much more. We'll explain. Guess where you're at? You're at the place. It's Pensado's place. Yeah. A great harmonica solo. Thank I you. like that. Hey, man. Stevie and I worked last week. Oh, Butterfield would be yeah. jealous. Yeah, absolutely. Butterfield's my man. Hey, guys, as always, thanks so much for dropping by today. Um, we've got a little bit of a departure from our normal format, but I think you're going to love it, right, Herm? Yep, yep. I think we should get to it, too. We've right? got so much. Hey, gang, no delay. We've got good stuff for you. Thank you for joining us, as always. It's part of our favorite week. Yeah. Why don't we get right to it? Our sponsor family, you know them the Blackbird Academy, Vintage King, Avid, Isotope, Fab Factory, Recording Connection, DTS, and Studio 202 DC. And in regards to getting right to it, Dave and I are really happy to announce a learning tool that we've been working on for about two years. It's called the Strive Series, and it's a set of online video curriculum on various topics by various major league audio studs. From CLA to Tony Maserati, from Candace Stewart to Ross Hogarth, Ku Carell to Dave Pensado himself. I'm a Major League Audio stud? You, well, you're Major League Audio. Uh, okay. Stud, we're still working on. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about all about social media with Will Thompson. I'm going to do something on management. We're talking to yeah. uh, Mixed by Ali about hip hop stuff, all yeah. kinds of things. Um, we're excited about it, and we get Very to announce excited. our first product, the first place I went to immediately once we did this deal. A place you know we love. Oh, no. So the you first to launch is the awesome Blackbird Academy, and it launches this week. Um, here to talk about it is one of our favorite guys. This is an esteemed instructor from TBA, along with Mark Rubel and Karma Banstra, and of course John McBride. Let us bring on our boy, the Renaissance Man, the Renaissance Man, Mr. Kevin Becker. Kevin, Kevin. Becker. Kevin. Hey guys. Kevin. what's up, buddy? What a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. How are you, man? I'm doing very good. You look well. so damn distinguished, Kev. What's I happening? Know. Something's happening. I, I wore a collared shirt today. You know, it's usually that, chill here, but that's I'm what it coming is. Coming on the show, I got to, I got to dress up. You know? Oh well, you've ruined it because we look so <laughs> schlubby. <laughs> it's out of bounds. So here's the cool part: when we started talking about this, the one thing I noticed is how much you just embraced this and ran with it. T tell us about the foundational series, its inception, how you use it, the whole thing. Well, when we started meeting about this, it's well until last year um, with John Cerullo and you guys and Karma and John, and we, we decided, as, as we've done in the past with our program and everything, is just to do things a little bit differently than other, uh, other vehicles have been. So um, we came up with the Foundation Series. Um, I think that was Mr. Cerullo's idea, uh, the title, but it perfectly describes what we're, up, uh, what we're, do to, what we're doing. And um, it's targeted at the digital native. You know, that's one uh, category that hadn't been really, um, you know, catered to in that, um, you know, when we do these summer camps that we do in the summer uh, at the Academy, I find these kids are digitally savvy. They're really into making their own music and they understand, uh, you know, the basics of what's going on. But as far as the nuts and bolts of signal flow and kind of the things that make what we do so special and great, there was a lack of knowledge there. So when we decided to put this together, I thought, you know, man, I, let's just do what we do at the academy, but view it from 30,000 feet. Mm. So, so we're seeing this, um, nothing's dumbed down. It's, it's catering on a, uh, uh, on a number, it's working on a number of levels actually. So, so, um, 
you know, we're, we're tackling all the hard concepts and the great stuff that makes a track great, like phase and EQ and uh, understanding electrical levels and audio production and signal flow and DAWs and converters and headphones and speakers and all kinds of great stuff. So, Oh, fabulous. And, and, and contextually, really the way it works is each chapter is somewhere between three and five or seven minutes long, correct? Yeah, it's, a, it's between, probably between 10 and 12 minutes. Okay, so, so the good part is easily consumable. You can get this stuff at, at Groove 3 at the site, correct? I love Groove um, 3. Groove 3 is a great site. Um, we can tell you, obviously we have a vested interest in it, that Kevin's work, the thing looks spectacular. Mm -hmm. it, it reads easy. It's really smart. Mm -hmm. And part of what I really like that Blackbird always does for those people, and we always encourage you, if you can go to Blackbird Academy, go join the class. You can still get into July class. You can still do that. But if you can't, for whatever reason, here's a chance for you to get this, their kind of learning, mm -hmm. their kind of signature, their care and love about audio in a way where you can consume it and afford it. W would you agree? 100%. 100%. Um, so, Kevin, as you, in this particular series, which launches this week, there will also be more in the future, right? So this isn't the last yeah. thing from Blackbird. Yeah, we've got, no, no, not at all. So this is going to be a 17-part series that's going to time release over the year. And then uh, from here, we're going to go into more product-specific uh, uh, things that we're going to produce. And then, you know, the sky's the limit for us because we're, we get the format down. We're getting better as we go. And the, uh, like you said, Groove 3 is a great site. And um, the Hal Leonard kind of, pipeline that makes this thing work is going to be fantastic. So it's, it's, we've got the Pensado you know, umbrella, we've got the Blackbird Academy, and we've got um, uh, the Hal Leonard machine. And in hockey, they call that a hat trick. So I think we're interested. <laughs> I'm well, Canadian. You made me feel good. What's it's hockey? Uh, <laughs> so the thing well, where grown men wear ice skates and yeah, skate around really, they like hit a rubber Disney thing. on ice or yeah, something? Yeah. Well, not quite well, like I'm Disney on ice. I'm going to get my ice, ass beat. some tough guys no, on that no, hockey. No, no question. No I question. forgot about that. Tough, tough men. So you you have gone down and taught at Blackbird. You, you really In understand. quotation marks. <laughs> yeah, but you, but you understand the ethos yeah. of not only why we like them, but the fact of the matter is, is that they're really turning out craftsmen and craftswomen yeah. to go and further the art of audio, yeah. and that they kind of put that same ethos in everything they do. Yeah, right? yeah, and I think that stems from the, the, the personnel, like Kevin, Karma, and the other people, Mark. Mm -hmm. um, they, they were in the trenches before they went to Blackbird. A right. lot of people go to the teaching profession when their career is over, these guys wanted to teach what right. they already knew. It's a great so point. It's, 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 it's next-level stuff. It's a great point. When I go, the reason I said quotation marks because the students teach me as much as, mm -hmm. I, as I teach mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And um, um, everything that John McBride has to stamp on is excellent. And now always they, has been, always will be. And now they have a chance to get this even if they don't go to Nashville because mm -hmm. it's been sort of reserved yeah. for if you get I've heard them. rumors that... The answers to the test questions for the students there are in this course, so you could actually go, go to the and course and learn the answers to all the test questions. Which so. means you can cheat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, gotcha. Good. Good. So, Kevin, good to see that, that Dave is keeping up the, uh, the uh, notion of, of principled teaching. Um, uh, as you did it, because you, you shouldered a lot of this yourself, mm -hmm. was it just a passion play for you? Because we know how much you care about it. Yeah, you know, content creation is something I've been doing for years through my affiliation with Mix Magazine, and um, I was editor of Audio Media USA and editor of Pro Audio Review. So, so I've been doing this for a while, and to be able to take it into a video format is something that I've really been working on most recently. Um, my my kind of weak point was, uh, you know, working the camera, but I got this cool uh, digital camera here, Ooh, this Osmo, sweet. which is a uh, uh, a, a drone camera, it's gimbal mounted, and it lets me do 4K resolution stuff, and, and I'm always filming here at the, at the uh, location. So you're going to see some really interesting views of what we do um, every day in the Academy and what happens every day at Blackbird, too. So nice. with, with our high-end clients in the same rooms on the same gear and the same consoles and everything that happens here. So it's really a, like I said, it's 30,000 feet, but it, it, it's, it's done in a way so the engagement is high and you're, it's gonna move people who are seeking knowledge at any age, honestly. It's not, exactly. just, it's not just youngsters, so it's gonna be great. Yeah. Exactly. And, and it's a broad 
uh, entry into the profession, like having all the skills in the world, if you don't know how to apply those, that's it it's, it's matter, useless. Right? Yeah. Yep. yeah. Well, listen, you know, we can't launch anything here unless we can give the audience something, right? So let's, why don't Am we... Am I eligible? You're not eligible, sorry. Uh, but a lot of other people are. So we're going to launch the Blackbird Foundational Series Sweepstakes. Don't be mad, Dave. I'll get you something. <laughs> Let me call John and Kevin, see if we can hook you up with something. My Is buddy, there a Blackbird t-shirt we can get to? My buddy is going to sneak me in. Okay, so cool. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here's the, here's the details of the Blackbird Foundational Series Sweepstakes. You'll go to the Blackbird landing page at this URL that you see right below me. You'll enter your name and where you're from, and you become instantly eligible. Eligible for what, you say? Well, the grand prize at the end of it, this will run for four weeks, is a flyaway to Nashville, mm. exclusive backstage access to Pensado Gear Expo, mm. an exclusive tour of Blackbird Studios and the Blackbird Academy given by John McBride or Kevin or some badass oh down there. And we are going to also have you on, and by the way, you haven't lived till you take a tour of the Blackbird Studios and Blackbird Academy with John McBride. That is like sort of a history yeah. lesson. If you can spell the word gear, it's going to be the greatest experience you ever You are going to had. have something close to sexual yeah. nirvana. <laughs> yeah. gonna... We met him four years ago, and we're still we're talking about We're still talking about, about, about it. Yeah, we're, we're like sort of crackheads. Um, but that's not all. Each week, we're going, and by the way, the grand prize winner we're also going to feature on Pensado's Place, but that's not all. Two winners each week are going to win things as well. Like what, you may say? Those winners will receive... Their own Blackbird Foundational Series, one. A Blackbird Drum Samples for SSD and Trigger, two. A year-long subscription to Groove, three, three. And a gift card from Hal Leonard. Two each week for four weeks and then the grand prize? Come on, man. You walk away from that, you've won stuff, you can do wow. stuff, you can start your career. Maybe, can we both enter? <laughs> Let's figure that out. Um, again, just to be specific, go to this URL, enter your name really and where cool. you're from, win some things, courtesy of the incredible Blackbird Academy, Groove 3, our partners, Hal Leonard, our partners, and a little web show called Pensado's Place. You know them? I do. You do? I do? Cool, cool, cool. I watch it every week. Um, Kevin, you know how much we care about you and love yeah, you, yeah. And, and you love us back. Um, we're honored that you you know, selected us to, to do this with. Um, could not think of a better place to start. And even though the next up is Dave's series, coming with a vocal production series, we know this is going to be a wonderful thing, and thank you for gracing Pensado's place, man. Thank you both. Thanks, and, Kev. And we'll see you guys soon. I'll oh, see absolutely, you at South brother. Street. Tell everybody we said hello. <laughs> Bye. -bye. <laughs> see you. The Big Granddaddy's coming up August 20th. You want to be there. The Pensado Awards 3, it's so exciting. We got a lot of details for you. You know where to go to the PensadoAwards.com site, hotel information, site information everything you need to know. We got some new hosts to announce next week. It's going to be really cool. <laughs> you don't want to miss that night. It's where the stars gather underneath the stars, and it's going to be a ball. We'll see you there. Okay, he's the happy Hungarian with a hip-hop heart. He goes by the name of... Jungle. Damn, that was dramatic. Damn. I'll tell I, you. I think Changor's been EQing his, his theme music. That's the best sounding stuff on the whole show. So he's been in there tweaking. Leandro? I think he and Karen Leandro? Becker thank worked you, something you. out on that. Changor and Leandro, your assistant, are working together because Leandro's already <laughs> working Jesus. Uh, What's happening, man? You good? Really good. What? So, a couple oh, things yep. really quickly because we got a pretty rich show. Um, it's always fun for us to go back and air the gear expos after we've cut it up and mm -hmm. working on the editing and stuff. A couple things that I noticed besides, you know, all the cool panelists and all the other kinds of stuff was um, there was such a reaction because I watched, I, I read Sound on Sound and they mm -hmm. did like this 12 page article on Audionamics, which is one of our campaign sponsors. And what was a trip is because I think we show their product specialist talking about it really briefly yeah, exactly. is when she was doing it, I turned around and you had all the <laughs> DJs around you trying to trying to get hold of the product they were right? all they were all working and wanting the product it was it was it was crazy the daily is mosque they're like we need this software yeah like, it's pretty kind of cool it was I, awesome I thought it was see. cool because it was so organic exactly and, and it's also good for post and other stuff you've used it correct mm -hmm. yeah good stuff uh, amazing stuff um just a little anecdote bob horn recently used it and kind of saved a mix and we're gonna we're gonna do some stuff from your perspective oh, i'm gonna show you, you, I'm gonna show you how to use it oh okay cool 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 i'm gonna so, show you how 
I use it. Okay, oh, gotcha, exactly, gotcha. Well, just good on audio damage. And I'll show you how to abuse it, too. Okay, cool. That's what well, we do. That's what we do. Uh, so just good on them. You know, 100%. we bet on them early, yeah. and um, they're product. really proving ADX. out to be. Love it. Good stuff to Matchek, Rick, Ellie, Talisha, all those folks who care so much about it. There's other folks over there. Good um, yeah, good stuff. Um, well, shoot, we should get to airing this thing. What do you think? Let's do it, man. Cool, cool, cool. Um, about 10 days ago from the day we were taping this, a bunch of audio lovers gathered in downtown L.A. There was a bit of rain in the morning. That didn't stop them worth a lick. We had a fabulous turnout. Great time. A bunch of legends stopped through, like CLA and Ross Hogarth and other folks. Vendors were there doing their thing. Panelists were off the chain. And, of course, we were major league silly. I think there's a group of pictures of us where we are just wacko. Oh, yeah, the Remember? Glasses, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, you'll absolutely get the vibe. Thanks to Vintage King and Chevy Shovlin, our co-producer in the Sister. event. We're happy to bring to you part one of Gear Expo LA. There's a little bit of an aberration on the panel because um, most people that go into music don't end up where they started. Like I started as a guitar player, ended up as an engineer. <clears throat> and, and I think that the path is more important than the destination. So don't focus too much on the destination because it's the path, the path that's the most fun and will keep you going. Uh, didn't mean to cut you no, off. That's a great point. So I, I, if, if we were to pass anything along to you guys, it's that, you know, I remember a lawyer in my early days, so I did a lot of business stuff early but I really wanted to be on the creative side more. And he said, uh, well, actually, it's two things. One, let's, let's use Maurice White. Maurice White, who I worked with for a while, recently passed this year, found Earth, Wind, and Fire. He used to tell me, you gotta open up your hands to let the universe in. And you don't know where you're gonna go, but you gotta be going. If you're not moving, that you can guarantee. But if you're moving, and you're flexible, you just don't know what's going to come about. I couldn't have told you five years ago when I was laying around going, my career's over, I need to move to Kentucky, that I would dream up an audio show, and here we are. There goes the guy with the Maserati. They took him away. And there's Gavin Lurston pulling up. No, <laughs> sorry. Um, so now... Now you get to the point, was becoming a professional part of your hopes, or did it just sort of start to happen to you and you started to take it on? Uh, I mean, it was always in my hopes because I wanted to do this for, for as long as I can. Um, so being a professional was something I was striving to just be every day. Like, I, I always wanted to take it to the next step and um, approach the next task, you know, for an engineer. Kind of this is the bottom of the food chain when it comes to the music side, unfortunately. And so, and also, like, I, I take a lot of uh, personal experiences from the military. Like, you're supposed to learn a whole bunch of shit from A to B or from A to Z and everything in between. So, I felt like I had to learn all the aspects of music, you know, music production from engineering to, uh, to producing. And at the end of the day, engineering should only be a tool to do the bigger shit, which is, you know, making the music. So, I mean, I just use that as a tool right now. Sam, you've had a really varied career. Did you just see what was there and embrace it and decide to make it part of the portfolio and just go wherever it went? I just worked really, I just loved playing music and I just surrounded myself with people that loved playing music and then all of a sudden these opportunities started to come. I want you to be in my band. Oh, you, okay, let's, let's go. I never in my wildest dreams thought I would be playing in Motley Crue a band that I was watching on MTV 10 years before, or or in whole, or even being the vice president of Warner Brothers. Like, I have no idea how that happened, but it's all about the journey. It, I never thought that that would be my destination, but I love it. And it's just, you know, a lot of hard work and a little bit of luck. But also, I, I feel like half of it is, you know, you guys could be amazing producers or engineers, but you have to get out there and meet people and tell people what you want. And, and, and you have to find the talent as well. So you could be the most amazing, you know, engineer in the world, but if you don't get out there and tell people what you want to do, it won't you, happen. We, we got you here. What do you want? <laughs> as a representative of Warner Brothers Music, what do you want? I'm not looking for the next hit. I'm looking for music that emotionally 
makes me want to move and, and mean something. I, I like there's already Rihanna out there. There's already Justin Bieber. Those guys exist. I want something new. So that, that brings up an interesting question we should delve into a little bit. Um, I want to ask each panelist. So Jake, in your world, um, and now the position you're in, A, is mentoring important to you? Do you try to spot talent that can work with you? What would you look for? What advice would you give? Um, I recently took someone under my wing uh, about a year ago. Her name is Susie Shin. So she was working in another studio and signed a publishing deal with my manager. He brought her over to a Halloween party at my house. Me and my manager were dressed up as the ambiguously gay duo from SNL. Oh, I love it. I love it. And please invite us to the next one, please. And uh, so Susie, I'm still on her phone, is Ace. Uh, <laughs> Ace and Gary. And... Uh, yeah, she started um, working with me as an engineer, but she has also already grown out of that into like additional production on Panic at the Disco and singing background on stuff and always doing her own projects. And, you know, that's really how I got into my position was I worked for Butch Walker for five years and he would let me use the studio whenever he was at home, uh, which when you get to own a Maserati, that gets to be more than it used to be. <laughs> So the weekends and nights were free, and uh, yeah, you can just make new crap. Sam, when you're looking at things, you've already described it, that you want something that moves you, something that's different. Do you find stuff on the internet? Is it networks? Is it referrals? How do things get to you as an a person? It's, it's all different. Um, I get uh, emails every day with, with everybody sending me links to their music, so it's very difficult for me to actually do my own work and listen to that stuff, so sometimes assistants or interns will help me go through all that stuff. But it's good to have a picture of what the artist looks like and as well to not to just see if it matches what the sound is. Um, but um, at the end of the day, I try and get to as much, like to listen as, as much as I can. So it could be YouTube, seeing a video, but it's it comes from everywhere. But honestly, don't send me a CD because my laptop doesn't have a CD and my car doesn't even have a CD player. So I, that's like useless to me. If you, <laughs> we get a lot of yeah. CDs and it sort of says, I'm from the 1980s yes. and I'm trying yes. to hold on to it. <laughs> and, I, and I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad because that's all you got. But honestly, um, and, and then- Send the thumb drive. Yeah, d yeah. Be, yeah, I like thumb drive. Yeah. Speak the language in which gigs, people are living. <laughs> and, and Sam, when you get something that, that grabs your, and I'm true for everybody, is seeing the person, seeing the artist live or just hearing their music, do, do you both help inform you? Oh, absolutely, because if you can't play live, then I don't care. I don't care how well you can auto-tune their vocals. I want to see that they're an actual musician and they can actually perform. And So that's what matters to me. Not, yeah. not to every A&R guy, but to me it does. You know, watching the, sorry, the Billboard Awards, like seeing half of the people not be able to sing or whatever, it's sometimes I know that the, the Billboard Awards makes artists not sing because it's easier, but um, I want to go to a concert and see a, a person sing and play their instruments. Josh, same for you. I know that you have, um, there are a few people in our business who have chops, creative chops, and their artists want their chops. When I worked with Dave a lot, they would actually sort of finish producing the records in his mix. He'd say, well, I'm going to replace the drums here. And I'd go, cool. And we'd have hits. And I'd go, I'm coming back to you. Um, you guys have gotten that stuff. So how do how do people get on the radar for your music? Is it, is it music that turns you on? And then, or is it passion? What is it? Uh, for me, like, like Sam was saying, it's the way the music makes me feel. Um, like I was just doing this kind of reggae mix the other day, and I, I was referencing... Uh, Santeria from Sublime, and that song should give you goosebumps. Like, it gives me goosebumps every time I hear it. And so, when it comes to something like that, you know, musically, I need to be inspired internally before it's anything else, like, before I can understand what the vocal is. Like, I just need to feel a certain type of way with it on, on a song point. Juice, you too? Same thing here. Like, it'd be sometimes, like, people will send me music, and I fall in love with the song so much, I want to mix it. Like, Send it to me. I'll mix it for free. That's how much I love the song. Cause like I just want to put my touch on it too. Because like it's just like it's something inside me. It makes it reminds me of what a why I got into engineering in the first place. And once you hear something like that, it's like undeniable. 
And for me, it's all about music. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to make music better if I can. And that's what I go off of every day. Dave and I are big proponents of making sure we're inclusive of women and colors and all kinds of things, no matter what it is, because something cool comes out of it that turns into a cool record or a cool mix or a cool definition or groundbreaking or technical. So please be involved. Sam, you agree? Yeah, where, where are the women? engineers i actually dave just introduced me to sylvia massey who did the first tool album and she blew my mind and then i just met Susie, and i know buffy and um but yeah there's way more women that need to be involved and i think you guys need to bring the women with you to work and and show them what you're doing so that they can get into it same for manufacturers do not get twisted about that kind of application, that kind of opportunity that exists in the talent pool out there. It's, it's very male dominated. And anytime something is really dominated, that means there's opportunity for where those people have not focused. Anytime you see a marketplace that's all going in one direction, if you go the other direction, you're gonna carve something else out and score. So Josh, you're in the position you're in. How do you see moving forward? Is the business of it, important to you? Is expanding what you're doing important to you? Is it your a &R chops? Where do you go with what you got? Uh, for me, uh, after that last album just came out, uh, my main goal is to just mix as many records as I can. Uh, I mixed a, a bunch of records on the project, but I, I felt like I wanted to step my mix game up. So this year I'm mainly focusing on mixing. Um, but, you know, the A&R thing, I, I kind of think about that as an engineering thing. It's just something that goes along with the record-making process. And if, and if you got to step up, find records, place records, make records better, however you need to do that, I mean, I'll just, that just comes with the territory whenever I work. I think if Josh and Sam get together, some magic <laughs> shit's going to happen. I'm just saying, I, you know, it's a manager. It's my manager's job. Um, Juice, you're in the position you're in. Um, one of the things I know about you is that you... There's an athletic kind of approach, like you're never satisfied. Is that part of the hunger? Where you're going with what you what you've done so far? Yeah, for me, it's just like I just want to get better because you know it, it's always a constant learning experience when you're doing this work. Because things things are always changing. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, <laughs> but like everything is changing, and I just want to keep getting better at what I'm doing. Like for me, I do the same thing. I want to mix as many records as possible too because that's the next step for me. But me starting out, I never wanted to be an engineer, producer. I just wanted to work in music. Like, I love music, and I just want to have a job in music. So whatever's next for me is just, like, taking advantage of every opportunity I got, making the most of it, and just moving forward from there. So, so one of the things that you see is even when you get there, successful, or I mean, whatever the definition of success, there really is no there there. No. You're hearing from people who are... So you just keep going and going, and it's because you're inspired. It's because you're passionate. Get your Benz, get your Maserati, get your house, get your trophy guy, trophy girl. All that can come with it. But if you lose the passion for it, all that shit will go away. So, but, so you want to keep your eye on the prize, and it's got to come from your gut and your heart first. That's the stuff that... You know, when, when, when we're in the cars and we got music turned up and we're bouncing and all that kind of stuff, we're not thinking about the position we're in. We're inspired by records. We're inspired by music, exactly. right, Sam? Exactly. So, so when you're in a, such an interesting position, as a player, when you're playing live, do you derive things from that experience that then affects kind of your A&R chops? Do you see what audiences respond to? Is, is there information there? Yeah, absolutely. And and um, recently on an A&R project, um, I was talking to many different producers that we were trying to figure out who was right for the band. And one of the, pro the weaknesses in the band is the drummer himself. But the drummer is the one who actually makes this band who they are. I do not want a producer coming in and chopping his drums up to the grid because it takes all of the excitement out of it and that's and so I want to make sure that we keep the drummer and it, what he brings to the table as a part of the records that we make on this album um, and because sometimes like uh, there's albums where the drummer feels like he's just about to fall off the tracks 
but that's what bring, brings the excitement. So, I, you know, I can A&R records like that, and then I can A&R records that have to be as tight on the grid as possible. So it all just, it's, it's just about what, what's right for the music. Jake, where are you going with, you've got this incredible success. What I love about your stuff is there's signatures to your records that, that just when I hear them, they stand out amongst everything else. And, and I, I caught myself going, who is that? And then I'd look and be you. And then I'd listen to something else and I'd go, oh shit, that's Jake shit. I, I, was, so ex I was excited to meet you. Is, is that on purpose? Is that your day? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm swearing. I just saw a child. I've seen a couple of children. I will adjust. Um, so was that part of it? And is it? Or is it just Jake feeling it and doing what Jake does? Um, I'm always trying to think, come up with something that makes someone go on the first listen, what's that? Um, hopefully that's like a lot of different kinds of sounds and not just one thing, but uh, that seems to be what gets everyone mo the most excited and me most excited, like, you know, what's that? I, I must tell you that in our show, as you know, Dave sits to my right and all these ridiculously talented people sit to my left. If there's one constant we hear from everybody, it's do not be typical. Pull from lots of different places. Don't get locked in your box. Open up your box, and that kind of hybrid signature thing is going to emerge someplace, and that's what will get on the radar of a Sam because it feels passionate, it feels different, it doesn't feel like something else. You can tell from Jay. Tell go check my text. Sorry. Um, uh, I'll introduce you to the Harry Hungarian in a second. Um, when I talk to Josh, um, and Josh is going to be working closely with Dave in a second. I'll tell you all about that. Um, he, when you talk to Josh, and you'll get a chance to talk to him out there, when you hear his musical influences, it'll blow you away. It blew me away on the show. Because I didn't know what I expected, but I didn't expect Soka and this, that, and the other part of his influences. When Juice talked about what he listened to in college in Alabama and became this other kinds of stuff, that artists who are unique went, oh, you understand how to make me unique. So have courage. Have courage to go for it. Don't be, you, you, it takes a while to find it, but you got to look for it. This is your Hitmaker panel. Give it up for Josh Goodwin, Big Juice Delay, Sam Baloney, Jake Sinclair. moment I'm taking a moment with Audionamics and the fantastic Ellie McNeil who has so kindly I poked you I'm sorry <laughs> she's stopping in or I'm stopping in to talk to you this is your house this is your house what's up Ellie uh, we're really happy to be here at Vintage King LA and we're here to talk about our new 3.0 release that's coming out June 21st so we have three different products, it's ADX VVC, Trax, and Trax Pro, and they're having the 3.0 releases, which are really incredible. 3.0 uh, for Trax Pro is the one I'm most excited about, because it now, not only does it allow you to separate out the vocal from the melody, uh, from, sorry, from the rest of the music in a mix, but it also allows you to have a spectrogram, which is totally optimized. It's all about faster processing. So it's about eight times faster than any of our older products. If you use it, you're gonna see a whole bunch of speed improvements. So our spectral editor in Trax Pro 3.0 is really exciting. We have something called pan specific view. So that means you can choose any subsection of the stereo field, any particular range, and it's going to show up on your spectrogram so that you can edit it. So if there's a specific instrument that might be panned just exactly 30% to the right in the stereo field, you can just identify that small subsection and edit on that. So you get this whole other level of control when it comes to your perfecting your separations. So it's all about automation. That's what we really pride ourselves on is being able to pull something in and automatically identify the melody or the vocal from within that mix, separate it out onto its own track. And so now, what are you loving about the Gear Expo this year? Uh, Gear Expo, I like the panels the best, obviously. It's really inspiring to see everybody from Chris Lord Algae to Gavin Lurson and, of course, Dave Pensado and Herb up there. It just reinvigorates you, your love for finding out new gear, geeking out, really geeking out over things, and it's so casual. I love that you can just go around and have conversations that are real and down to earth with some of the people who you've looked up to for your whole life. So accessibility. Oh, Ellie, I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you for just giving us all this info and talking to us. 
thank you so much. And yeah, you know, if you have any questions or anything, you can always reach out audionamics.com uh, and you can reach me at support audionamics.com. She's pretty and she's efficient. Thank you. That's a wrap on Ellie. Here with Daniel Rowland. Now you are the senior audio engineer as well as the head of production services with Lander. I am, absolutely. And it was it's a mouthful. It is. You're busy. A little bit. You're very, very busy. You work a 40 hour week all the time, if not more. So do you, I'm assuming, <laughs> right? 40 hour week is a normal thing in the music business. So wait, so, so let's talk about the, the Gear Expo. This was amazing. It was. It's the first one of these I've come to. I've been to Vintage Kings before, but I've never done, you know, the Gear Expo, certainly not with, with Pensado, and it was crazy. Huge turnout, a lot of cool companies, obviously companies that I use and I know Dave uses, so yeah, it was great. We, I was here for like four and a half hours, so it must not have sucked. Not for nothing, you got L.A. people out in the rain, so no, it didn't suck at all. Yeah, it hasn't, I don't think it's rained here in two months, but today... Well, there is a drought on, so we're not going to be mad. So now, a, a little bit about what you guys are doing over at Lander, because it's, I mean, it's like crazy amazing. It is crazy amazing, yeah. So we're in the, uh, the business of automated mastering. So, you know, the idea of, you know, taking a track, a mix that somebody has done, you know, picking it apart, pulling out uh, production aspects, you know, frequency, dynamics, all that kind of good stuff, figuring a genre for it, and then mastering it, comparing it to tens of thousands of other songs. So in a lot of ways doing what a mastering engineer does with experience but doing it in an automated fashion so we really we have a team of mastering engineers who train our engine on what to do and it's it's crazy it's constantly learning like every new track that we get it learns how to do it better the next time so pretty cool stuff. and you you liken it to a self-driving automobile automobile yeah absolutely it's it's the same technology that's used for that same technology behind like facebook face recognition, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's machine learning is something that's affecting a lot of areas of our life. We're just one of the first companies to apply it to music. And how did that whole idea come about? It was actually uh, a bunch of students at Queen Mary University in the UK did this, grad students had done this. So, uh, and eventually it was picked up by a friend of mine, Justin, who's a co-founder of Lander. He saw it at AES. Uh, and, and which is, you know, you see a lot of cool stuff at AES and it eventually became a company and that's, you know, been a company now for about two years, but the research is about eight years old now that it's been going on. So yeah, it's been a long road, but it's good stuff. And so what would you say if you had to pick a favorite of the things that you've done today, what would you say it was? Oh, my favorite thing about the event so far, honestly playing around with some of the Moog gear, I have to say. So toys are always fun to play with, getting to chat with Dave and Herb, obviously, and just getting to meet, you know, people that I've seen at NAM and seen at AES and, and you know that you kind of when you it's it's always good to come to these events because you start to see the same people and you start to have a rapport even if you've really never met you're like oh, I've seen you somewhere before so just chatting and networking has been you know it's been fun it's been a good experience well it has been wonderful thank you all so much for I mean this is amazing and thank you for stopping by to chat with me In passion, important because do you derive from your live stuff things that help inform your production? Oh, incredibly. No, it's all happening in the audience. You know, the, the tools are now available to us that we can take this like an instrument. You can really be playing with the audience. This is no, no longer a one sided, just looking at a screen, checking your email kind of situation. So, as the tools have developed and we're able to have that kind of communication, the ideas you both have in the live setting that are transformative and then when you take back to the studio you immediately feel what's vibrant and then you can make those tracks incredibly fast you can have those tracks sounding professional incredibly fast there's you know it's beautiful that you can keep it all internal or with the extra tools that are available now you can actually have that approach where you're able to transmit that music really quickly to other people have them do their parts vocals uh remixing whatever that kind of aspect is and then go you know uh, yes, sir. I did a, I uh, back in the day, uh, the, the DJing profession produced Timbaland, it produced uh, so many great producers, and uh, the DJ that, that does live events was kind of left behind, but now there's a uh, kind of a new profession that's taken hold with, with Skrillex and Diplo and uh, Calvin Harris and on and on and on. They're not making records. They're leaving what got them to where they were, actually not really, but um, 
can you can you kind of expand on that because it, it seems like that's a new career path to, um, to making records, much like it was back in the day of Tim Lynn and uh, and those types of DJs. The word DJ just keeps changing every five years. It's a different profession. It, it does, Dave. What uh, what happens was, as a DJ, you're very relevant, very current. I mean, I could tell you the average age just by just glancing through the audience because you do it automatically. You automatically judge the audience when you step up. By judging the audience and understanding who you have, you know what makes them work. And so uh, it, it like kind of naturally, you know, progresses right into producing. If you know, if a Timberland would DJ in a club and know what works or a Little John would know what works in the clubs that he was at, it wouldn't be difficult for him to go back into the studio and say, you know what would really work? If this song did this, you know? So you have, for example, uh, John Legend um, two years ago put out a, a ballad called All of Me, right? It was a piano-based ballad, incredible song. It was the number one, I mean, I did 43 weddings last year and I would say it was sang 35 of the times, you know? It was the number one love song. But Tiesto went and took the All of Me ballad and he remixed it because he probably thought, you know, everyone loves this song, but in a club setting or in a dance setting, I can't play that song. So let me take it, remix it, produce it in a way that I would like it to be, you know, the dance version. And that's kind of where things are progressing. Let me just chime in really quick. Tiesto didn't remix that. A ghost producer did. Someone who could have been any of you guys. So. Let's just be honest, there's a lot of production that's happening. There's a lot of big names, but then there's a lot of room for other people to be involved in this community, even if your name isn't at the top of the... Let me say, Tiesto just got credit. That was it. <laughs> he just got the credit. That's it. But and that I don't want to diss anybody, because I don't know his name. Opportunity. Yes. Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Let me add, let me add um, as, uh, in the music production scene for music producers, I just want to add two things that I see them uh, rather new opportunities and jobs. Uh, number one is we see a lot of collectives, like Dedalus mentioned, of producers, Team Supreme, and Selection. But there's also a new thing about collectives for uh, sound design, to sell presets, uh, to sell sample packs. Uh, so that also can be a great way of kind of uh, going uh, and making some money for music. Maybe you're still working on your music you're about to release, but maybe you got some good sounds, you can join a collective like Cymatics, for example, and, um, and uh, add to the sound design team by making samples, making presets. And another job opportunity, which is rather new in the last 10 years, uh, back in the day, you used to come to a, with your band to a, to a club, and there used to be a sound guy, a live, a live engineer, which is still there in the clubs today, to um, operate everything and to do the live mix and to make everything sound good. And today, a lot of big shows are using... Um, backing tracks, I'm talking like the biggest show, Justin Bieber, um, Kanye West, Lady Gaga, whoever it is, and um, they need an expert, which today is still using mostly Ableton Live, but uh, we're going to see some other softwares get into the live scene, and that's another position that wasn't there before, an Ableton Live expert, and all the biggest shows today have an Ableton Live expert in the backstage, so that's another um, job opportunity that I see that came up uh, and it's rather new in the last 10 years. So it's, it's, it's a great point. Really quickly, uh, Evan and Chunk are going to be passing out posters, which you can keep for yourself. When we strike, you can get the legends to sign it, or Dave and I will be out to sign it. So just grab them and go. They're going to spread through the crowd. Um, you can Snapchat, geotag. It's all ready to go. Snapchat away, geotag away, do all that shit. Uh, Chloe Taylor, who is our Pensado correspondent, is over there, the really attractive black woman in the bright yellow by the camera. Uh, she's going to be here. If you guys want to stop by and say something to the camera or what it means or have fun or get on the show, she's right over there by the blue tent. A lot of stuff going on. Uh, we want to strike in a second to, to, to make sure that you can hear these guys do their thing. Cybrain, let me ask you a question. Yes. So f when you're teaching... Do you learn stuff from that that helps your performance and you can bring to your production? Do you get stuff from students? Sometimes there's an advanced student who has who already have his own unique thing. He developed it on his uh, individual journey. So absolutely, yes, I can uh, learn stuff from students. But I say, well, just as being a teacher and striving to be the best I can be, I'm still, I'm teaching every day on a daily basis. Hundreds of students a year, all the universities around California and the West Coast, 
a big artist I want to mention by name, going as an Ableton expert and uh, teaching them. Um, it, it just by being that, I still watch tutorials every day and see online courses and talk to other um, head of music departments in universities because I always got to try to be uh, the most knowledgeable. So there's not going to be any question in the classroom. Someone asked me and I don't know. So that's, that's one of my biggest fear. I, should think it should, I think it should be the biggest fear for any teacher is to not know an answer to a question. Oh, but what's so, more beautiful than that? that absolutely, but that, that's why I'm always striving to learn more. Because there's always going to be a question you cannot answer. So you go and find out how to do that. Um, Chagor and Evan and those guys, see if there are pens or sharpies around. Uh, Moski, you are also a minister. Um, you are informed by your faith. You bring that to the table. But yet you still rock the house. Is there... Conflicts, or does Jesus just like to throw down? <laughs> uh, you, <laughs> there, there are. I think I believe everyone who has any kind of a moral compass uh, encounters some type of conflict in your job, in your workplace, and in your passion. Um, I think uh, the fact that my moral compass is just led by God and my Christian belief it just puts me in that place. I think everyone has a certain compass that they operate with you know some people i've seen studios you can't smoke in a studio it doesn't matter you know that's just their thing so it's just my thing and yes it does shake me i don't play a lot of explicit uh you know i don't play a lot of explicit because i'm on radio i can't play a lot of explicit which helps but even in my live shows i'm pretty rated pg if is, you will is there a difference in dj in your radio show than what you do when you or are you just doing what you normally do, but just on radio? Well, radio, uh, based on our hourly ratings and uh, our demo, you know, you the crowd is our demo. In a live, you know, setting, the crowd is never the same. Even if you have a residency at a club, you could attest to each week it's a different set of people. So it, it puts you on a different road to a different adventure, you know, as far as when it comes to live settings. In radio, it's a little different. Uh, I know my demo, you know, on 102.3 is, you know, 18 to 35 at the time or at a certain time. I know it's 35 to 50, you know, at a certain time. So I know who I'm playing for uh, here. I can look around and basically just based on that. The other thing about radio is spontaneity is not necessarily, uh, you know, used, you know, here. I don't know if you've ever done it, but sometimes you will put a record on in a live event. And people kind of look down at their phone or don't respond. And you go, oh, let me take that off. Let me, And you go right to another record. And radio is not the same. So that would be a major key. Daedalus, the marketing, because um, you really have a movement around you and you've been able to affect people. Is marketing and social media been important to that for you? You know, absolutely. Any way you can reach a fan is, is meaningful. In my mind, though, it's always been an excuse to get your hand in their hand, shaking hands, and make a human connection. The internet is just an extension of our nervous system. It's our eyes are bigger, you know, our brains are bigger for it and everything. But at the same time, that outreach, you know, it can make you feel like you're doing stuff and actually just spinning wheels. You get some plays on SoundCloud, you feel like this is great. Of course, your track gets taken down off SoundCloud because somebody disagrees. But anyways, um, you know, hey. But, uh, but neither here nor there. Um, the real truth is, you can have this effect, but really still having somebody actually pay money to, to come to your show is the, is the craziest prize. And it's an incredible thing when that actually happens. That, when you set that as being a bar and people actually decide to do that thing, that's it's an incredible feeling that this is empowered by. Next week, part two of Gear Expo LA. Dave, take us home. Oh my goodness. Um, we preach a lot here uh, about unity and about the community and seeing the community come together and, and and do this for you guys, um, especially some of the pros, my friends. It was just heartwarming. Yeah. And uh, I learned so much from the guests. So stay tuned. we got another one coming for you next week. Bye-bye.